during the rule of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest assigned service in the regiment of Abijah. His name was Zechariah. His wife was descended from the daughter of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. Together they lived honorably before God, careful in keeping to the ways of the commandments and enjoying a clear conscience before God. But they were childless, because Elizabeth could never conceive, and now they were quite old. It so happened that as Zechariah was carrying out his priestly duties before God, working the shift assigned to his regiment, it came his one turn in life to enter the sanctuary of God and burn incense. The congregation was gathered and praying outside the temple at the hour of the incense offering. Unannounced, an angel of God appeared just to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was paralyzed with fear. But the angel reassured him, don't fear, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Elizabeth, your wife, will bear a son by you. You are to name him John. You're going to leap like a gazelle for joy, and not only you, many will delight in his birth. He'll achieve great stature before God. He'll drink neither wine nor beer. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit from the moment he leaves his mother's womb. He will turn many sons and daughters of Israel back to their God. He will herald God's arrival in the style and strength of Elijah, soften the hearts of parents to children, and kindle devout understanding among hardened skeptics. He'll get the people ready for God. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Good morning, Good morning. and Merry Christmas. Did you know Christmas is more than a day? In the church calendar it's a whole season, but dare I say it is even more than that. We continue to celebrate the coming of Christ Jesus. Now and always. But there is another child whose story intermingles with that of Jesus. His own cousin John, born just six months earlier, who has his own miraculous, dramatic origin. Whereas Mary was quite young, Zachariah and Elizabeth were quite old. Too old, some would say, to have a child how they must have prayed with tears, many long nights. I only have an inkling of the longing and pain that being childless must have been like for them, especially in their culture. Until an angel appears to Zechariah, as, as happens regularly, right? And declares, your prayer has been heard. And how many of us have longed to hear those words? To know that our prayers aren't just words and thoughts and feelings offered up in faith, vanishing into the air like smoke. But that someone somewhere is receiving them and taking them to heart. This is then a passage of hope that what we most long for is not forgotten, that we are not forgotten. Today we meet to worship with the God who hears us and who continues to call us to hear him. Most years we would continue the story on from here. We would get Zachariah's response and penalty for that response. But this year I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the beginning. Like Zechariah and Elizabeth, like Joseph and Mary, like John the Baptist and Jesus himself, we are called to bear God with us, within us, 
into a hurting world that needs to know that it is heard and, heard and loved and not forgotten. And I pray that Antioch will be a congregation, a people, a community, a family that proclaims that message. I would welcome us into a time of announcements and sharing. Does anyone have any announcements to share? Any joys or concerns? We want to uh, continue to lift up those in our family who are uh, unwell, who are suffering in mind and soul and body. Ewan, you had your hand raised? Yeah, you want to come to this one down here? Hello. So um, this is more of a very personal thing, but um, around winter, normally my grandpa, who has uh, dementia, sort of slopes downwards. This is the first year he's ever been really sharp around Christmas and winter. In fact, he's been really excited about it. So I just wanted to share that and say that's really happy for us. Amen. Joys do abound, and maybe we don't share them enough. Amen. I was. Lots of great people participating. Yes, I was very glad to see all these, uh, all these great faces participating. Yeah, if you haven't checked that out, you can go to our uh, YouTube site or to our website and find a link to that Christmas Eve service. Any others? Any other joys to share? If you at home would like to share something or ask for a prayer. Please let the church office or myself know, and we can read them here so that we can share those with our church family. If there are no others at this moment, would you join me in prayer? Faithful God, God who hears, God who does not forget. God who knows every hair on our heads. God who does not forsake even the smallest. We come to you now in the midst of this difficult year to thank you for hearing us. To thank you for your heart that cannot be filled. There is room for all. We thank you for Christmas. We thank you for the reminder in the middle of the coldest, darkest days that you have not abandoned us. And for all hopeful reminders of how precious we are to you. In response, Lord, we would make you most precious to us. We pray that our hearts might expand so that there'd be room for all and especially a central place for you in our lives. We thank you for listening, for caring about what we say and think and feel and pray. For the joys that surround us, Lord, we give you thanks. Open our eyes to see them. Come and make a joyful home among us and within us. And fill us now as we come to worship with the joy of your coming. In the name of Christ Jesus, born King of Kings. Amen.
Okay. Let your praise of God sound to the heavens. We shout the good news of God's mighty love. Let all the stars, the sun, the moon sing praise to God. The universe that God created sings its praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Please pray with me. Light of life, you came in flesh, born into human pain and joy, and gave us power to be your children. Grant us faith, O Christ, to see your presence among us, so that all of creation may sing new songs of gladness and walk in the way of peace. Amen. As Christians, we are called to give as God gave. This, this season has been particularly difficult as we haven't been able to gather as, as family, um, big family events, and, you know, give gifts in the traditional sense. Um, however, with the sacrifices everybody has have, had to make, it has really placed a lot of importance upon giving things such as your time to others and just being there for other people. So this season has really shown me uh, uh, different ways of giving that might not be what we usually think of. Yeah, this, this year has been really hard for certain people um it, it's just really nice to see if you even if it's just a phone call or a text that says hey how's your day going it's been really nice to see how small things have brightened the lives of people that have either lost a loved one or it's just been really hard for them they got laid off by their jobs or it's just been really hard for them and it's nice that even if we can't get together, the technologies of these days, like Zoom and Google Meets and all those uh, services, we still get to uh, see each other and be with one another. I will be reading Luke 1, 57 to 66. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared in her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah, 
But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like his name to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wonder wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. How many of you have had a joyful Christmas this year? Oh, that was pretty unanimous. That was pretty great. Yeah. I bet if I polled our surrounding community, church folks, non-church folks, uh, I would get some folks who would agree with you, some folks who would adamantly keep their hand down, and some folks who feel like they needed to raise their hand even if they didn't feel it. Maybe that's some of you out there, and that's okay too. Joy is the expectation of a good Christmas, right? We, we sometimes try to force ourselves to be joyful, even when we're running on empty, right? The joy fumes are all that's left. We sing joy to the world because the Lord has come. Finally, God reigns. Jesus' kingdom begins. Jesus' kingdom isn't finished coming, but it started. And while we wait and work for its final fullness, we get glimpses of what is coming when the joy of the past and the joy of the future come together in the now. And one such glimpse into the joy of the kingdom, I suspect, comes when a man or woman becomes a parent. Such was the case for Zechariah when his son John was born. As we just heard from Ben, the tale of his birth and his naming, and how peculiar everyone found that whole scenario. I'm sure they were extra surprised when Zechariah started to sing. How many of you with your families sing songs? Some families still do that. Others might find that a little awkward to just break out into music, right? This is how the story continues. When it says Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit, this is what he sings. Now I'm going to read these words, but... If you want, you close your eyes or keep, or keep them open, whatever you want to do, and imagine them being sung spontaneously, unaccompanied, right? And just imagine being in the room as Zechariah spouts out these words. Listen to this. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He came and set his people free. He set the power of salvation in the center of our lives and in the very house of David, his servant. Just as he promised long ago through the preaching of his holy prophets, deliverance from our enemies and every hateful hand, mercy to our fathers as he remembers to do what he said he'd do, what he swore to our father Abraham, a clean rescue from the enemy camp. So we can worship him without a care in the world, made holy before him as long as we live. And you, my child, prophet of the highest, will go ahead of the master to prepare his ways, present the offer of salvation to his people for forgiveness of their sins. Through the heartfelt mercies of our God, God's sunrise will break in upon us, shining on those in the darkness, those sitting in the shadow of death, then showing us the way, one foot at a time, down the path of peace. What do you think happened next? 
Was there just kind of a silence? Did people start applauding? There is no joy like that of seeing a prayer answered against all odds. Amen? John is born in fulfillment of his parents' deepest longings as well as God's promise that he would send a messenger to prepare the way for his coming. The joy of this moment fills, let's call him Papa Zach, with such a spirit that he bursts into song. A song that spans the entire history of his people, of Israel, recalling the promises God made long before and bringing them into the present. And he centers all of this on his newborn son. And he says, and you, my child, will go ahead of the master to prepare his ways. And that would be exactly what John goes on to do. He sets the stage for Jesus. He calls people to turn away from whatever self-interested paths they've been walking and turn instead to the way of God's peace. This is a new beginning. Like every year, right, when New Year's comes around, a chance to come clean and start fresh, to recognize what didn't work before and decide to set out on a new path. You realize the first day of the year could be any, any day, right? It's kind of arbitrary that they just pick, oh, we should pick January, right? The first day of your new year, of your new life, of your new path, could be any day. We are much like John, called to prepare the way for Jesus to come in our own hearts and lives as we pray and we grow, and in the lives of those around us as we serve and love, in our communities and institutions as we work for justice and truth, as we name the wrongs around us while pointing to a better way. Moses spoke long before about prophets, who would be raised up by God from among the people, and how important it would be for people to listen to them, to take them seriously. The trouble was and is, we don't always recognize a prophet when we hear one. Maybe we're more concerned with being heard than listening. John had his work cut out for him. It was not easy to listen for God's voice amid all the voices around. Nor would it be easy to declare the truth to people who prefer comforting lies. Hello? That might get dangerous, even lethal, to say the truth. That is unpopular. Yet Zechariah is so full of joy and pride beginning of John's story, at the sight of his son, he has no room for fear. If God can do this, God can do anything, right? The song ends with a vision of peace, a path of peace, to be specific, a way of peace. Zechariah's people have been in one conflict or another for so long, it had become just expected. We are a people forever suffering. Israel was the scapegoat, the victims, the oppressed. And as Zechariah sang his song, he no doubt knew that there were those others in Israel who were itching for another fight. Another rebellion that would no doubt end in calamity for them all, unless they could discover the elusive path of peace, the way of God. We are still dreaming of a time when people will walk that path. 
I'm struck that Zechariah calls it a path. He doesn't say John will, will lead them to Jesus who will lead them to peace. He says he will lead them to the path of peace. As in an ongoing journey. An active direction. One that requires constant refocusing. Sometimes when you're out hiking, you start on a trail. Just because you get the first step right doesn't mean you can close your eyes. You'll end up where you don't want to go. You have to keep watching. Look out for the obstacles. There's always a route. There's always rocks. There's always turns that are unexpected, especially if you've never been on this path before. But Zechariah sings that God will guide his people to this path, this peaceful way. The Greek word for guide literally means to straighten out or direct. Right? Meaning that until God guides us, we are a bit crooked. We're a bit bent, distorted. I imagine God grabbing us like wandering children and facing us in the right direction. Because we so easily stumble or lose our way. John's job was to be God's messenger and help guide and direct and point people in that right direction. Which is never a comfortable place to be. To be the one whose job it is to set people right. In his day, you were either pro-Israel or you were pro-Rome, with little room in between. The way of peace was not popular to either side. No wonder both sides had issues with both John's message and Jesus's to come. They didn't play by the cultural rules of the day. They didn't play the political game of sides and parties. They defied traditional definitions of loyalty and service, placing God at the very top. There was an ancient saying in Israel from the earliest passages of the law pertaining to walking the delicate line of faithfulness and not wandering off to the right or to the left, but that God's way was the radical middle. This is our challenge. This is our comfort. Christmas is about hope. Hope that the way will become clearer. The promise is born in the flesh. God has come to set us on the right path. But still there is a need for people like John, people who will point the way, preparing the path for people to follow Jesus more closely, more carefully. Maybe John's out there with a leaf blower, getting all the stuff out of the way that will mess us up, trip us up. Maybe he's setting out mulch so our way will become clearer and not indistinguishable from the rest of the world. When John was born, his father sang a beautiful song of hope. And the people gathered around, neighbors and friends, family, all wondering and asking each other, what then will this child be? If you watch any of my devotions on YouTube, you'll know I spent some time trying to unpack that question, which I think is very profound. What, what then will this child be? And we might be asking as we enter this new year, what then will this year have in store? What will God do with it? And what will we make of it? Will we continue as we have in the past? Or will we set our feet on that new path of peace? 
listening for the directions of the Johns among us and follow the master from the manger to the cross to the kingdom. To us, a child of hope is born. Would you rise for our closing hymn, number 189. Boy, I can't wait for these things to be gone. <laughs> you don't have to wear glasses, you just have to wear glasses. <laughs> be a whole other set of issues. <laughs> but we can hope. This is the hope that we were born to proclaim, right? That like John, we are never alone. That there is a path to peace if we just listen and look and pray. And so as Paul in Ephesians says, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Go in love.